Alrighty. Do we have any motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Sure. Any questions, comments, changes, additions? No. Any questions from the public on the agenda? All right, moving on to item C, the consent calendar. Can I call for a motion? Uh, so move. Second. Okay, just, I'm going to write a glance for you the minutes and the bills paid. Okay. On the minutes, I wasn't here last meeting. But I, in reading the minutes, I oh, don't know. Were you in attendance? No, no. no. Oh. oh, never mind. Am I correct? I really wasn't here, right? <laughs> you weren't. <laughs> okay. It says absent. I know. Whatever. <laughs> uh, but in reading the minutes on the, would be, looks like the second page, item number three. Uh, it talks about uh, FEMA projects approved or whatever. But there's no explanation of which ones, and I thought that would be helpful, at least to me, since I wasn't here. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, that could be included. It was part of the packet uh, in the manager report. It kind of went through each of the different uh, uh, each of the different claims. There's seven of them total, but uh, if the board wants, I'm sure we can throw just that a couple of words or into the minutes. Mm -hmm. Do you have any answer? No, that's all. Thank you. Other questions, comments on the consent calendar? I have a question on the minutes, or a statement on the minutes. Um, I just want to clarify something that I said with regard to the promotion of the uh, supervisor. Um, I asked a question whether the supervisor promotion was going to be a a step up in the same step as she had in her um, vacated position. Um, not necessarily to say she's going to move from one step into the EE step, which seems to be implied here. I just want to know, um, in other words, if she was in the EE, would she be moving into the new position in the EE? And, and that would have been you know, quite an increase. Gotcha. That's what that was about. Okay, other questions on the consent calendar? Uh, bills paid? Yeah. Yes, part of it. Um, I'm curious as to its uh, number one, 1994 emergency services market company. It says it's an annual subscription. Emergency services. That is him and that is I am responding? Yes. 800. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It is annual. It's for. It's for our pager notification through the cell phones, through the computer. Um, so we'll send out messages to our staff. Okay. Anything else on the consent calendar? No. Anything from the public? Right, item C, consent calendar. Okay, hearing nothing, um, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those I have abstain. abstained since I wasn't here. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, item D, public comment open time for items not on the agenda. I do. Okay, Linda. Okay. First of all, I would like to ask that people kind of pay attention and get their faces out of their computers. I don't know if it's something that was kind of rude, but I think it would be nice if you all could pretend to pay attention to people who are speaking. Thanks. Okay. So, um, I'm going to read this because I want to make sure I get everything in that Ms. Green said. Um, I really want to thank you, Leah, for your comments last month in referencing what to do with a fire department after the chief retires. Um, the past is in the past. And this is one of the things that we've been trying to put aside. And you suggested the board needs to shift their perspective and should also take into consideration the possibility of improving the services for the residents, which I really appreciate. And to me, that means 
not having a volunteer fire department, not reducing our fire department to um, a two-person engine. And you also said it would be nice to be able to move forward with dignity. And that's what I, I really liked when you said that. Uh, excuse me, Jeffrey, are, are you listening? I hear every word you're saying, ma'am. Thank you. So um, Ms. Green also com communicated or commented that there's a lot of history and emotion behind the discussion about what to do with the fire department. And I know that from you know, going to meetings and stuff. But you said the district needs to think of this as a business decision. Stop the disputes and reorient ourselves and come to a compromise which I 100%, 500,000% agree with you on that. And I just want to applaud Ms. Green for her understanding and her perspective on this very serious situation. So thank you so much for your thinking and your comments. Thank you. Uh, Stephen? Sure. Um, well, uh, these are some general comments, not specific comments, but tonight's uh, subject in I guess every, every uh, meeting in, in a way is about budgets, and budgets are about priorities. What is the uh, future that we uh, wish to have, um, and uh, how do we craft the, uh, the Marinwood CSD of tomorrow? Um, the good news is we've got record revenues, and that's due to the rebounding um, uh, home sales market, which doesn't look like it's going to uh, uh, slow down anytime soon. Um, and uh, the possibility of uh, huge savings uh, should we uh, have a merger with our uh, fire department with, with uh, another fire department for economies of scale. So um, I know one of the agenda items coming up is going to be the uh, increasing the taxes um, and I would hesitate, well I, I'll address that later, uh, but I would like to point out that uh, not only have our revenues uh, expanded record, uh, we've also expanded our expenses through uh, uh, additional staff, uh, uh, salary bumps, that sort of thing, uh, promotions. And so um, I urge you to uh, be circumspect and be good stewards of our future. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments for items not on the agenda? All right, we'll move on to item E, district matters. So first we have item number one, fiscal year 2017-18, proposed budget amendments. Sure. This is an item we uh, go through every year, usually typically around this time, and it uh, used to be kind of led by the fact that we were using the county accounting system as our, our accounting system, and the county would cut us off if we would hit certain thresholds. Uh, we obviously don't have that problem right now, but I still think it's a good practice to go through as you get to a point where uh, projections that were made a year ago can kind of become a little bit more clear and into focus. Um, primary revenue driver here is current secured property taxes. I didn't want to really dive into the nitty gritty of all of the little taxes, but the current secured, I'm certainly expecting uh, to increase uh, to a total of about 1.5 million for this fiscal year based on the 55% projections that we got in December. Um, and then obviously the expenditures as you go through. Some have been decreased, if not completely removed, while others have been increased. Um, of note, please, in, uh, and I made a note at the bottom of it, uh, but just want to make it very clear that uh, for the fire under 5220810 miscellaneous supplies, uh, that line is fairly well over budget and there was a non budgeted uh, expenditure that was made. It has not been paid at this point in time, but it's been included into this amendment. It was for uh, four sets of turnouts uh, that weren't uh, part of this. If uh, approving this essentially would approve that, uh, at which point I'll go ahead and sign the check. 
those turnouts were earmarked for next year as opposed to this year? Correct. Correct. And then next year is did uh, modified accordingly. So do I have a motion for this? I have a question. Do we, do we need to have a motion first and then? Um, sure, I'll make a motion to approve to, to the budget amendment as presented. I'll second. Discussion. Two questions. One, uh, there, I, there's an email or some months back when we were talking about the kitchen where there were two budget areas where you said we could defer those and have to make up the difference for the kitchen cost. One of them was turnouts, as I recall. Are these the turnouts that were mentioned in that email? I don't believe Did so. Did you have other turnouts no. budgeted for next? Maybe I, I don't next think I was talking about deferring the turnouts for, to make up the cost for the kitchen. I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't recall that either, to be honest. My, my the email is here somewhere because I copied it. It might have been like I'm turnout right. lockers. I think it, turnout it could have been. Turnout yeah, lockers. Was uh, lockers. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the turnout yeah. lockers in the, in the bay. All right, that, yeah. that's fine. And then I just want to be sure, if, I think the way I understand this, when you get all the way down to the bottom, it says not gain lost to the budget, 16,557. Correct. That's, that's putting us money, those are dollars ahead for us, right? Correct. Okay, that's positive. Correct. Not, not yeah, the net increase in expenditures would be 28, the net increase in revenue would be 45 and change okay. to give you a net gain of. Just wanted to be sure I understood it right. Yeah, no, you got it. Any more discussion from the board? Sure. It answered my question. Okay. Um, Questions, comments, Well, actually, yes. I mean, um, we're called the uh, Marine Woods CSD District. We're, our, we have three um, priorities. One is the parks, two is fire service, and three is the light, part of the lights. Um, in years past, uh, I believe the parks really have been shortchanged, and it's evidenced by uh, the lack of maintenance in some areas. Um, I recommend that instead of focusing 100% on, well, folk, we, we need to focus on... on Stephen, we're on the budget amendments. Do you have a specific comment regarding that specific page, or just on the budget amendments? We're, we're talking budgets, and I'm referring to budgets and about, priorities. Yes, so we're on the budget amendments. The okay, I, is that budget. is not my question, nor is it my comment, so please allow me to continue. No, because you're not on topic. You I am on topic, no. and please do not interrupt me. Stephen, you can't do that. Uh, Stephen, you're not on topic, bro. Trust me on this one. Wait, one more, one more item on the, on the agenda. We'll get to budget. Yeah, we're not there yet. We're... I'm sorry, aren't we talking about budgets? Budget amendments. Amendment. Changes, Amendment. to, the, changes okay. to the this okay. year's budget. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the public on the budget amendments? Okay. Uh, let's call the question for the board. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay, item two. Draft draft district budget for fiscal year 2018-19. This is for review. Eric, do you want to sure. Uh, so, uh, you know, from the last time that you've seen this, I didn't replicate all the notes that I put in the last one uh, into the notes for this one. Uh, but I have, uh, prime, you know, so the main things that have happened from then to now, and I actually feel that this budget is getting very close to what uh, could be potentially presented as uh, for approval. Uh, I've gone through, I've looked at property tax revenue as I've talked to people within the finance department um, and I have updated those accordingly. Uh, the current secured is really kind of the main one that you can really look at and have any sort of a actual projection about when it comes to the ad valorem property taxes. The rest of them are in large part up and down with no real rhyme or reason which is why many of them you see aren't being uh, changed much if at all uh, year over year. Um, please excuse when you're looking at 1819 budget so many of these lines that end in uh, with one dollar like 
the property tax unitary 9501. Uh, that's simply a rounding thing that occurred within Excel. And then when I went to enter these in, is when I caught it, I'll fix that so that they'll be even. Um, but the property tax was uh, on current secured. I uh, put in the projections I got from the county and then applied it to what I expect to receive this year. Um, so you see it has a large jump. They are not projecting a 7.2% increase by any stretch in current secured but I applied it to ultimately the 1.5 million that you just approved in the amendment. So when these are updated, you'll see that number go down, uh, the percentage increase go down dramatically. Uh, I've gone through and really looked at all of our utilities, uh, uh, looked at 12 year actual, 12 month actuals, uh, threw in a factor for potential increases and tried to get those as updated as best I could. Um, obviously some of them jump much higher than others. Water sewer primarily is the one that that was grossly under budgeted this year and the anticipating increases for um, I even talked to the people at the sewer department to find out what type of potential increases they may be imposing this year so we got that information um, and then added in election expenses uh, in terms of actuals uh, there's still some level of vetting and journaling I'm going to assume to do I mean the quarter just ended uh, last week, so it's hard to really be able to go through this and uh, in a matter of a couple of days look at every single thing that's happened in the past quarter, but I think that they're pretty good. We've definitely done a little bit of work to them. Um, do keep in mind, importantly, in terms of the actuals, when you look at things like summer rec programs or pool memberships or pool uh, operating revenue, um, that actually includes large portions of funds that will be deferred to next fiscal year. Uh, I do have those numbers, but I can tell you off the top of my head, I think we're at about 600,000 for summer rec programs. Uh, I actually toyed with the budget amendment bringing that down. I don't fully expect to hit this 1.027, but that's not a result of lower programs. Uh, that is 100% a result of a fiscal year slicing a program year in the middle. This fiscal year, we only have two weeks of summer program happening at the end of this fiscal year, when typically we have three, so that's an extra week's worth of summer program revenue that's gonna get deferred to next fiscal year. So it'll make it look like we're coming in short, but if you look at it over a multi-year or simply in a seasonality, uh, it all comes out in the wash. Um, what else have I done here? Obviously projecting a, a modest net operating gain. I, I know I put it in the notes, but I think it needs to be mentioned again that uh, you know just two months ago when we had our audit, uh, this district still in a negative net position, meaning liabilities still outweigh total assets on the balance sheet. Um, I think it's a good trend. I think it's moving in the right direction, but this district still remains without any level of critical reserves such as uh, capital and operating reserves, emergency reserves, and this uh, is the first year by a razor thin margin we were actually able to maintain a positive cash flow throughout the year. Uh, certainly anticipating uh, some significant operating increases over the next few years, primarily with things like pension uh, that we have already projected out that by 21, 22, you're gonna be looking at three quarters of a million dollars annually as an operating expense on that. Uh, not just a liability increase. So I would certainly recommend continue to look to build the general fund balance to afford that on operating, but also uh, if we can keep up this trend, it would be a good idea to start looking at actual reserves just from a sound financial management practice. Uh, overall though, I feel decent about this budget. I think, uh, you know, it is what it is. We've spent a lot of time at, at departmental levels looking at the various expenses. Some of those numbers have changed accordingly as we've gone in and been able to look at more things. Some of the services I've been able to change beyond just uh, things like utilities. Um, and I, I think we're pretty close and I don't envision a huge change from this point to uh, what will be presented in two weeks at the budget hearing. Uh, a couple things. Uh, well, no, I'll let you ask questions. I think I've kind of covered it there. Okay, right, questions from the board. Eric? Question on three or four items, specific items. Uh, I asked the manager to give me a breakdown as to what were the items that caused some of the items. To, there's just a total number here. 
and I asked what they what they were. Uh, but let's start out with the first thing that is 52-101-20, consultant fees. There's $9,000 in there for a creek study. And I suppose that's nice to have a creek study. But when you get that study, where's the money going to come from to do anything if they recommend something? I'm sorry, I, what I, number are you talking about? Five two one zero one two zero consultant fees, and I just think that would be a good one to delete. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't want it to be that we're sticking our head in the sand, but really and truly, uh, to spend nine thousand dollars to study the creek just seems like a lot of money, and all it's going to do is point out where we ought to be spending money probably on a magnitude of 10 times this expense and maybe we don't really need to be doing that and so that's my comment on that then if i move over to 5220916 capital outlay new equipment i guess we're i'm in the parks budget uh, there's eight thousand dollars for a dump trailer and $12,000 for a new gator to make a $20,000 budget item. And so my, my first question is, is the dump truck still usable or is it shot? It's still usable, but uh, it's on its last legs. And to continue to fix it is just throwing bad money, after, good money after bad. Okay, so it's ready to be replaced. Yeah, I mean, the tentative plan is we're gonna for lack of a better term, drive it into the dirt, or uh, and when it needs its next major fix, it'll be retired. Okay, so if it's that, and, and the gator, the same yes. issue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the motor's just wearing out on it. It went through a fairly large fix a couple years ago, uh, just a bit of an overhaul uh, on the motor, but it's uh, it's just getting weaker and weaker, and those are the two vehicles that the park guys drive the most, most likely, uh, getting all around the grounds. Thank you. Okay, then uh, in fire 5220916, capital outlay, new equipment, there's $43,000 in there. It's somewhere it's explained that that's the cost of the, the new Type 1 engine, the, right. the payback or whatever. And my question is, there's been a lot of discussion about a utility vehicle. And in that same mysterious email that I couldn't find, but I do have here somewhere, it's mentioned as something that could be postponed. Uh, it's already, it must be in this year's budget somewhere, some money for it that could be postponed to, to use that money to do the kitchen. Uh, my, my point, that I don't know, maybe under the fire department report, I have a, a number of comments about utility vehicle, but it isn't in here now, and that's the intention as of right now with the budget, am I correct? It is not currently in the budget. It's in the it's not in the eighteen nineteen budget. There is an allocation for it in the seventeen eighteen budget if you're talking about the utility truck. Okay. Yeah. So uh, later in the section on fire when we get to that, I have some comments about utility utility vehicles. Okay. But I think those cover my issues on the budget, aside from the fact that I think we need to be putting more money against our uh, unfunded liabilities than we are. Um, I'd like to mention a couple of things. Uh, number one, thanks for bringing up the utility truck. Um, when that proposal was made several meetings ago to defer the purchase of a utility truck in order to afford the kitchen, that is what I commented was an irrational idea, not purchasing the utility truck, just for the record. <coughs> um, I'd like to ask about the uh, land and building maintenance, which seems to have gone down so much. Yes. That's why. Um, can you explain that to me? Yeah, because the land and building maintenance had all of the potential FEMA repairs mm -hmm. estimated that were in there, and those, I, I don't have the number immediately off the top of my head, but was several hundred thousand dollars allocated primarily between park and some level to uh, fire. Um, that's certainly one of the things I want to kind of look at and say, okay, what are we actually expecting this to be and we can rebuild it back into 
some of this. I'm still kind of on a holding pattern with FEMA in terms of eligibility of two of the sites, um, while the others have, one is just going through a cap determination and the uh, others are actually going through the payment process. In fact, I received a small payment for one of them this week. So is it just the expense items that went down dramatically or did revenue items? Revenue went down as well. Uh, all of that was captured within OES reimbursement. And now you'll see that OES reimbursement went from a large number to nothing. Okay, okay cool. All right. April 24th, is that when the budget approval meeting is? Yes. Okay. Um, by that time, we'll, if we use the park department as sort of a collecting point. Correct. Uh, before that meeting, will we have allocated all of the funds between the departments so we get a, a reasonable idea? Yeah, they're allocated to a degree now in terms I'm assuming you're talking about taxes and what I have typically done is I go through uh, and I get it to a point where everything is entered and updated and I don't anticipate making more on the expenditure changes immediately before being presented I then bring uh, I mean these things are down to a tenth of a percent as far as allocations go and I round them in so that they are uh, both fire and rec are sitting at about $10,000 over uh, showing a net gain between both departments, mm -hmm. uh, and then the rest sits in park. Yeah. Okay. But yes, as those things change to some degree, I'll continue to follow that basic pattern. Okay, and I think you answered my last question by saying that the budget amendments are going to get the um, secured tax closer to a 5% level as opposed to a 7 and something? A, a little bit less. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. A little bit less than what? Five percent. Oh, okay. Very good. Because that's close to what the uh, last published estimate was from the Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. But I'm still building that off of projections because mm -hmm. I don't know what we're going to wind up finishing this year with. So I'm trying to be a little bit conservative with it still. I'd okay. rather uh, under guess on it than over guess. Understood. Thank you. Other questions, comments from the board? All right, uh, questions, comments from the public? Yes, I have a question on uh, the fire budget. Uh, item number 5130120. Uh, group medical costs uh, going up a little over 10%. Are we budgeting for a, in that figure, a full-time chief and full staffing of 11 firefighters, because we haven't had full staffing with 11 firefighters for quite a while. So I'm wondering if if you adjust for the number of firefighters, it appears we average, and not having a full-time chief, if that increase would be 10% or is it just that the premiums are just going out of sight no matter what? Well, there's a few factors that play in there. One is not only the premiums, but some of the plans themselves change. Uh, some people have uh, gotten married throughout the course or added kids to their plan or whatever, so you have some of those factors. To answer your question, in terms of all salaries and benefits, uh, the fire department budget is assuming the current staffing model, and then it's updated based on who we have in those positions and where with various step increases or anything like that. I do not make any assumptions within the budget that there will absolutely not be a chief position or that uh, we only average nine step. It's budgeted for 10 firefighters and a chief. Uh, until a sound and final decision is made, otherwise I don't want to, I would not recommend Let's, I wouldn't recommend making those assumptions that staffing might turn out this way, so I'm going to budget it that way. It's at the status quo as it is right now, updated to reflect who we have in the position. And it's just a budgeted amount. It's not what typically actually will be paid. Right. So uh, the 10% increase, is, is that what is generally going on in the health insurance world? Uh, health insurance rates increased, uh, our medical only premiums went up by about 10, or I'm sorry, about 6%. The, uh, this also includes things like dental, uh, vision, life insurance, um, so on and so forth. Uh, and then also, like I said, incorporates uh, 
any changes that have happened throughout the years towards people being, you know, single, employee plus one, employee plus family, um, and then for the uh, vac currently vacant position, I just budgeted it at um, a family rate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and what's the current vacant position you're talking about? There's a current vacant position. There. There's only nine firefighters. Relief. The firefighters. Firefighters. The relief, relief, relief that firefighters. we don't have. Correct. So you're including the relief firefighter in your calculations, even though we don't have it. Correct. Thank you. Stephen. Um, okay. Uh, I, I actually, I guess I want to start with uh, uh, some of the things that Herb brought up uh, in the Parks Department. Um, as far as equipment goes, um, the dump truck is really a very heavy piece of equipment and so is a dump trailer and I'm not 100% certain since we get our materials delivered why we would need such a uh, you know big heavy piece of equipment when uh, a thousand dollar trailer, a landscaping trailer which could be pulled not only by the truck um, uh, and but also the mule and if you're going to replace the uh, gator. So, you know, a little five by eight um, landscaping trailer is, is quite a, uh, it, it'll represent quite a savings and it's not going to be so hard on the turf and uh, the natural area. So it, you'll get a lot more use out of it. I would recommend that you start with that and then if you find that that particular configuration is good and you, you you absolutely need the dump trailer and all that that entails, then go ahead and, and purchase that. Um, I've spoke many times about the uh, abuse our open space gets from uh, our equipment, uh, heavy equipment being rolled over, uh, you know, the natural areas and uh, I hope uh, as we shape the future of this district that we can take greater care of our open spaces. Um, another thing, in the rec department, um, you know, it, it almost bothers me looking at these budgets because a rec department is fantastic, they're doing great things, but when it gets down to the nitty gritty of special events and stuff like that, we really don't know, you know, how the business, uh, the detail of the business is, is operating. Um, uh, you deposit money in, but I don't know if there's, I've never heard of an after, uh, you know, uh, analysis after the fact, well, should we be doing these events again? Did we make money or did we just pay a bunch of staff and made 50 bucks um, for lost money. Um, I just, I think with such a fantastic uh, offerings that we, we have, we need to start shaping uh, that department as one with, with the business. Now with regards to the fire department, um, you know, we love our fire department. We want to keep them around, we want good service, and it really is quite apparent uh, that uh, the to me, not everyone here, to me that the future of the fire department is in some sort of regional uh, fire department where there'd be greater opportunities um, for advancement for them and also um, opportunities for us to really uh, budget our fire department towards our specific needs. At, as we all know, most of the uh, fire department work is uh, done outside our district in the city of San Rafael and um, I, you know, at this point any expansion of uh, budgets in that area and uh, uh, buying equipment, I think really it, it should be on, everything should be put on hold till we understand the direction of the fire department. So I, I uh, I don't see a lot of, I, I see the status quo plus, you know, it looks like a, num, a, a multiplier was added to it, but I really don't see the, the big, uh, big picture thinking of the future of our fire department. And I urge you, 
before approving the budget that you uh, address this. And of course, uh, if you're going to raise taxes or propose to raise taxes, you also understand uh, what those taxes are going to be raised for. Um, and that's all I have for this moment. And, um, you were talking about raising taxes. I think that's just the normal, every few years we raise the taxes by a few dollars that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, we can discuss okay. that, sure. And the other thing I want to mention is, um, personally, I don't think we can let the utility, fire, fire utility pickup truck go much longer because we can't use it, we can't get to someone who's having a heart attack or in serious danger of, you know, serious, more serious mm -hmm. injuries if they have to wait a half an hour. Mm -hmm. um, well, so, I've got, I've got, okay. I'm going to answer that okay. later on, but. Okay, yeah. but I just want, you, you said we should put everything on hold for now, and personally I think that the, um, well, until the, we figure out what's going on with the utility fire truck is important. I feel like this is like a coffee class. Like a <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Is there any more questions, comments? I think the salad board soup still. Um, is there anything else, any questions, comments from the public on the draft budget, and then we'll come back to us. Anything else out there? Okay. Er. I forgot one item. Okay. Uh, one of the things that the manager says he's looking into is uh, repaving one segment of path in the Coos Valley Estates. Uh, it's been my observation that past boards have been really good about kicking the can down the road on maintenance items. <laughs> Uh, one case in point is the condition of the park maintenance shed where the roof is so bad it's almost unsafe to get up there and put the tarp over it because the roof leaks so badly. The other, uh, I wasn't thinking about it, but then I went back and looked at the uh, photos that were provided as part of the mold remediation project for the firehouse kitchen. And the firehouse kitchen, before they started tearing everything out of it, was a disaster. It should have been, the cabinets should have been replaced a couple of years before they had to be ripped out because of mold. We seem to be kicking maintenance down the can down the road. Uh, Lucas Valley Estates was built in a number of phases. The first phase uh, installed a pedestrian path from the end of Mount Rainier Drive to the end of Louise Court. And that's the one that's showing major cracking and breaking up of the pavement. The longer, it, it's to a point where it's about to become unsafe, and the longer we wait, it's going to cost more. Uh, looking at the next phase of path, which starts at Bridgegate and goes up towards the tennis courts, that was done one or two, installed one or two years later, and it's in pretty, really pretty good shape yet. So it appears the oldest path, which is logical, is the one that's deteriorated first and needs to be replaced or repaved. Uh, before it gets to a point that it, it is really expensive to redo. So I just recommend that we include that item in next year's budget. Can I respond? Uh, thank you, Herb, for reminding me. I actually did have a note about that in, the, uh, in my memo here leading into the budget. Luke and I were actually just talking about this uh, in the last couple weeks as well, and we're just, just trying to find somebody who will get out. With, uh, to be very frank and honest, I have no idea what a ballpark number for that would be. Um, and we are simply trying to get somebody out who, A, would be even qualified to work on the project to get a rough estimate of what would something like this cost so that I can have it put in there. Uh, I'm certainly shooting to try to get that done before the next one comes out. The other thing you reminded me of, which was another conversation that we had, is uh, every several years, uh, every you know, probably four to five years, the tennis courts need to get resurfaced, and we kind of do them on a bit of a rotating balance between the three different sets of tennis courts we have, one across the bridge over here, the ones right along the road, and then the one at Creekside. Um, the ones over across the bridge that are actually on the school property that are our tennis courts um, definitely need to get resurfaced. That's about an $11,000 expense. Um, we did have the company come out and look at it, and that was the rough quote that they gave us. We have typically done that through a Measure A fund expenditure, and I'm going to bring Measure A to the table at the other thing, uh, although there's not too much to go on with it. Uh, 
So that could either be put in as an operating expense out of the general fund, or we can continue to look at Measure A for that. Right now, Measure A only consists of two very large-scale projects. Uh, right now, looking at the maintenance facility, and then secondarily, within at not this pool season, but after the next pool season, we're going to need to resurface the uh, main pool out here. Um, and that are two very large projects that we've been kind of pinning Measure A for uh, within the commission and then within the staff. Quick comment from the manager. County Parks did a whole bunch of path work on the paths at the juvenile hall area uh, in the last 12 months. Okay. And maybe they can give you a contractor or a unit price or something. Perfect. Thank you. I would like to speak to that. Um, as far as, uh, not Herb, I'd like to hear your opinion on this. I personally don't think that a, a hard path there is probably needed or, or is a good idea. But would be, what would be much better and more natural, a better, better experience would be a gravel path or, or maybe even a natural path. Um, if it was a gravel path, then maintenance we could do ourselves, just bring up, uh, bring up uh, uh, gravel each year and, and spread it in the appropriate places. I, it would be a nut, my, it's a nicer to jog on and, and walk on, and, and I think that because access in that area is a problem, I, do, I don't see that the high maintenance requirements of asphalt uh, is 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 warranted, and not only that, there's probably some environmental concerns that you have to worry about too. So I, I just just want to put that in the mix, and I think that as you go forward and, and look for solutions, that you keep in mind that that the natural solution may be the, the most preferred and actually the less expensive route to go. All right. Any other questions, comments from the board? Can I, can I ask what, are you going to move on? Yes. Uh, so I, I, I wanted to circle back to Irv's original okay. um, comments about the Greek study and get kind of a bit of a board consensus on that, uh, on whether it should be pulled or it should stay. Uh, if you need clarification on what it is, I'm happy to give you that as well. But I think we talked about this at the last meeting. Uh, but that's the purpose of kind of going through these so that way I kind of take some of that direction and incorporate any changes from there. So I don't know if that's something the board wants to discuss or not. And the purpose is? The, the purpose of the board discussing it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. No purpose. no purpose at all. The purpose of the $9,000 expenditure? Uh, this is going to be done by Noble Associates, uh, who is uh, Rachel Cammon formerly of Cam and Hydrology, they're going to go through, uh, look at all portions of the creek that are technically the district's responsibility and give an assessment on creek conditions, bank conditions, and looking at uh, potential future areas of failure that could, uh, uh, to Irv, makes a very good point, great, we know that we have these various areas, now how are we going to fix it? Um, the counter argument to that is uh, a penny in prevention is worth a dollar in something but uh, you know being proactive is it, it can all be uh, oftentimes be much more cost-effective than being reactive uh, and this winter I think we've escaped for the most part but uh, we got hammered on that creek last winter um, and some of it was kind of scary as to what the total results might be uh, so it's just really to go through look at it give a professional assessment of all areas of the creek and, and uh, clearly identify areas that are of concern, as well as potential mitigation factors. Knowing Rachel, many of her mitigation factors don't involve coming in and doing uh, large structural things. These are actually more natural, bringing in, you know, re rehabitate uh, areas, bringing in uh, uh, more natural things to shore up the environment, not necessarily coming in and doing large scale uh, engineered projects. So would it be true to say that given the um, issues that we received or that we encountered from the rains in the past year, the people that did do examinations of the creek were focusing exclusively on the areas where we had deterioration and you are looking to have someone look at areas that were not compromised? Correct. They'd actually look at the entire stretch. Uh, you know, essentially do a creek walk 
creek map and a full report on all aspects of the creek that run through district property. Okay. And it can be done in two phases. She uh, actually quoted, uh, the, I'll just call it the eastern part of the creek uh, that runs basically from Round Tree up to Lucas Valley Road at 5,000. And then the stretch that runs through Lucas Valley states at 4,000. I'm sure she'd break it up and it doesn't all have to be done at once either. Let me do four and then we'll go this way. Or. Okay. First, once we get a study that shows that there's some problems, mm -hmm. if we ever do get another major storm and get the kind of disaster, mm -hmm. we, we aren't going to be able to claim any of those areas because we already knew about it and didn't take care of it. Second, Las Colinas Valley Sanitary District did a maintenance dredging project. All they did was clean out the silt that accumulated over a number of years on a section of the creek. The permits cost them about a million dollars with the studies. Lastly, uh, the description of the creek that you seem to describe is way beyond the areas that we have ownership of, it sounds like to me. We own from the common line between Casa Marinwood and Roundtree up to the bridge here. Mm -hmm and Lucas Valley Estates. Mm -hmm. No more. You, you, you seem to say that we're, they're going to look at this part that's the county's response. No, 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 no. Okay. To I Lucas, just, when I say, I meant the Lucas Valley Road, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, so basically, to your point, Casa Marinwood, Roundtree, up to Lucas Valley Road, and then the section through Lucas Valley Estates. Those are my comments. Okay. Anybody else here? Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes, uh, should you decide to do this, I think you should try and coordinate with the county and Vene uh, De Silva, the flood control guy at the county, to do an assessment of the creek from Mount Lassen down to Miller Creek, which is in the county open space district. And there are signs to verify that because if you only do part of the creek, but not that big section, which is probably a mile from uh, Mount Lassen all the way down to uh, Miller Creek Road, uh, if you do everything else and don't assess that, which is the county's responsibility, then I think uh, you're making a mistake. Uh, Irv, Irv, could you? Be a little more specific about you said a million dollars in permits, and when was that done? And I mean, They're ju they just finished the fiscal work uh, a few months ago. It started, oh boy, one full year ago at least because they got shut down by the early rains of the previous winter. But it's all it's all current. It, but the studies they had to do, the mitigation measures that were dreamed up by the consultants for just a maintenance dredging of the accumulated silt that's come down from, from here, really. Yeah, mm -hmm. our silt. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, actually, I have a, a comment on the uh, creek study. Um, uh, following up on what Irv said, I, I, I want to uh, let people know um, that one of the ideas I, I have had, or several of us had, uh, is a, uh, a nature trail, or a trail trail, that goes along the creek and goes all the way up to the uh, source of Miller Creek. Uh, of course, that cr crosses some of the land that we don't currently have access to, but um, as a long-term project, if we can wrap our uh, collective vision around the idea of a you know beautiful, uh, nature Valley. Um, I think a creek study, I'm not 100% certain if this is a, uh, a hydrology study. What, what is, it's, it's simply, a, it's not a nature study, it's, a, it's really just about the, uh, the structure of the creek. Hydrology, you had it right. Uh, right. Oh, okay, so I, I'm just saying that it would be useful and I understand that I, I never really actually knew that we owned from Las Galinas uh, a, a strip of land that goes all the way down to the freeway and I, I guess Irv has want, long wanted to 
use that as a path, and I think that's a fantastic idea. It wouldn't cost much, and um, anyhow, that's why I complimented you on your good ideas. So I, I would love to see some sort of long-range plan of really making our creek uh, paths uh, accessible and usable by, by all. Thank you. Um, so was that enough? Or I guess I, I don't know that I added in my input. I just have one quick thing. Mm -hmm. If we do the study and we do find things that you said um, that are wrong with the creek or the creek bed or whatever, then what do we do afterwards? Kick it down the can, you know, kick the can down the road. I mean, we don't have money to spend on repairs, so why would we spend the nine thousand dollars now for a study that we're going to do nothing with at the end of the study? So I think Herb has a really good point about why are we doing this study. Yes. Thank you. Does putting nine thousand dollars in the budget for a study um, automatically approve the expenditure? Not necessarily. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so this started with Eric. You were asking for follow up on your question slash comment about perhaps removing it from the budget. Mm -hmm. Where do we want to take a straw poll? Do we need that? Do, I mean, I don't. I don't know that that was satisfactory information. Well, I actually think that Jeff brought up a good point. I think the way the budget sits right now, I would leave it in the budget. I'll ask. Uh, I'll ask Noble to give me a more formal proposal for what they propose. It can uh, then be talked about as a separate agenda item on a separate date within uh, the park and rec matters, uh, and decisions can be made at that point. It doesn't necessarily mean that, okay, it's approved, I'm gonna just push this forward and do it, uh, and kind of go from there. And I would also assume, uh, knowing Rachel a little bit, that she'd be happy to kind of come down to one of those meetings and discuss some of her thoughts as well. Um, I don't disagree with anything that anybody said kind of on both sides of it. I can see the benefits of having a greater sense of knowledge of the hydrology and what's happening with the creek. Um, I can also see some of the concerns with having that knowledge. Uh, I don't think, again, that uh, they were envisioning, you know, kind of huge fixes, just kind of looking at areas that could uh, potentially uh, dampen the effect of the water hydrology has along the creek banks by you know, more natural habitat restorations and things like that along there and uh, potential to find levels of grant funding that I believe that they would partner with us on and helping us to find. Um, so ultimately I was looking for some guidance and direction on that based on Herb's comment, but I think Jeff kind of brought up a good point that we can leave it in there, I can get a more clear, uh, uh, we'll bring it back to the table for potential approval later on down the line. Good. Jeff's comment caused me to have another question. At $9,000, who would be the approving authority? Would it be the board, or would it be you, or? Uh, it would fall within my approval authority, per se, but uh, obviously I think it elicits further discussion, especially based on this very initial discussion. I think we're getting a little bit more into the details of the project, um, as opposed to it being within the budget, so I can tell you now, Irv, I'm not going to push it forward. We'll get a more thorough proposal. You know, this is based on some conversation I had with Rachel and talking about some of the things that were happening back here um, as follow-up to the work uh, and the study that Miller Pacific did. Um, so I can tell you, I'm not going to move forward with her doing the study, but uh, once we get through the budget uh, and get a little bit further into summer, I'll reach out to her and ask her if she can give me a more formal proposal as to what she's envisioning. Uh, it would be like what recommendations uh, may entail, so on and so forth. But I'm not going to say do the study. Fair enough? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, so we're in the item. Uh, E3 resolution 2018-03 increase the amount of the special tax for fire protection and emergency services. Sure. This is what is written directly into the voter approved tax every year. It goes through uh, at the December uh, the CPI rate. The CPI rates are December uh, year end there was 2.9%. That's the consistent figure mark that we, uh, or measurement date 
that is used uh, year after year for this. It's uh, again written in as part of the uh, part of the ordinance and the initial resolution that, that went on the ballot was approved by the voters uh, for uh, potential increases uh, at the amount of CPI. Okay, motion. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion. Okay. The board in history of the Marine Community Services District voted not to approve. I don't know that answer, Jeff. This actually what it was the CPI increase wasn't written into the initial tax, and then it was about eight years ago where they rewrote it and put the CPI in, and I think ever since then it's gone up by CPI. In 2011, it was rewritten uh, where there's actually a much larger increase to it. I think. Oh, it, that was when it included the CPI because before that it didn't. Could be. Yeah. Could be. I know the park one is always included in CPI too. I, I don't know that history to be honest with you. I don't know if the board has ever not approved it. I don't know if this district's ever been in a fiscal position. You, you, make that you, can, you, can, you can actually vote to lower the tax. It's up to is how it's written. But. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily at that point yet. Any other comments, questions from the board? Is there any possible? Is there any forecast as to what this means for the entire budget? Yeah. Actually, in the budget. Okay, so this is singled out. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. two point nine percent from about nine hundred fifty thousand dollars. So. Yeah, no, if you look at uh, under the fire and then uh, under line 4120610, go from 1.06 to 1.097. About 37,000. Total increase per square foot would be less than one cent, it would be 0 .00, uh, 0.0093 cents per square foot would be the increase. Did you say 37,000 increase for fire or for fire and park? No, just for fire on this one. 37 for fire. About 20 bucks a home. Questions, comments from the public? Uh, the yeah. questions and comments, I'll start with the question. Can you speak? Uh, um, first of all, when does this tax expire? It doesn't. It just needs again limit approval every four years. Okay, so it's potentially could expire. Uh, are you are you certain about that? Because I thought these these perpetual taxes, these parcel taxes, were illegal. They had to have an expiration date. No, no they have to go back on the ballot every four years as part of. Can't limit approval for that. And, and this is what the what the election is going to be it. about. And even if. Didn't we just have it? Uh, the last one this went on was in 2015. Technically, it'd have to go on in 2019. 2019. Okay. 13 years. Tell me about it. Okay. How will that work? With aren't we using? Aren't we going to even your elections now? Um, only for the board. You can put a ballot measure on the uh, on the ballot at any point in time. Uh, and actually, for any of the regularly scheduled elections, but typically we do it in November to be effective the following fiscal year. And in those cases, it needs 50.1%. It doesn't need two-thirds. All right, any other questions? Well, I, yeah, so I, you, you did answer a question. Now I, I guess I have some comments. So the, you mentioned that there's going to uh, money for an election. Is this what this money's for, to raise the, the, or to get approvals for these taxes, or what's the money for the election for? The cost that the county charges to put a ballot measure on, to put a measure on the ballot. Right, and is one being proposed? Not at this moment, no. So you're you're just setting aside the money? No. What was discussed at one point was if, uh, and this can, there's a lot of time still for this discussion to happen because ballot measure deadlines aren't until August. Um, because so many districts have consolidated and moved elections to even years, the more items that are on a ballot, the lower the cost. However, that doesn't necessarily weigh true with ballot measures. The 
because they see these as two different things. You have the cost of, say, a candidate election, and you have the cost of measures elections. So just the fact that there's so many more candidate elections happening this year does not change or impact the cost of the measures election. This is what I got from the county elections department. So whether you put it on this year or next year, it really depends on how many other measures are on the ballot in terms of total shared costs that the district would incur. We're talking about the Canadian approval. Correct. Mm -hmm. We don't need that until 2019. Yes. Yeah, but the initial... I understand what you're right, saying. and I actually just got more of this information this week. I probably wouldn't recommend putting it on the ballot this year. And election expenses will be reduced accordingly. It doesn't need to go on until next year. And having a lot of candidate elections on the ballot does not impact or lower the cost between sharing total election costs of ballot measures. It matters how many ballot measures are on the actual ballot. Okay. So... But right. it does significantly lower the cost of candidate elections when there's so many more on there. You got it. Um, all right, so I'm going to call the question on this. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Uh, item E. Will go up by $5.69. Okay, an aggregate for the district? $12,000. Just throw that number yeah. out there. Did you look at it? No, I'm guessing. Okay, well, I can tell you right now. 2,000 units times 5 bucks. It'll go from 356,000 to 366,000, so you're looking at roughly $10,000. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any comments from the public? Mm -hmm. yeah. Just clarification. Is, once again, this is doing the same thing you did with the fire tax. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I'm still a little confused about the 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 election budget um, because 2019 there's no candidate elections coming up uh, this fall and then um, so there are for the CSD there's open spots in the CSD in the fall it's my understanding in November yes okay yeah so I, I don't want to get too far off track and you're well, talking about elections. Well, yes, there is uh, elections okay. Right well, now, fair enough, but I hadn't meeting. finished my comments. Okay. okay. Um, so, I mean, the the whole idea of voting yourself in an extra year is so we didn't have to have the election expense. So I, I'm now I'm confused. Now we we have an election expense. There is always an election expense. The election department spreads the expense out between how many different districts uh, and entities are on the countywide ballot. When everybody consolidated as required by law eventually to move to even year elections, so many districts moved it to this coming up even year that uh, to not go in this even year and to have stayed in one of the odd years would have significantly increased the cost of elections because there have been significantly fewer. Okay. Uh, you're right. Okay. So it was 2017 when we didn't have the election. Correct. Okay. Fair enough. Thanks. Any other comments from the public? All right, let's call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, item E5, the update on the FDSS committee. So we did not meet this past month. There are brief notes uh, in here, but really more opening up to the board questions, comments, discussion. Still Any? nothing from Calper? Nothing. No response at all. No response to my uh, follow-up of when can I expect a response. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a couple months, right? Um, it's been Two? probably a little over one month. Uh, we sent that to them, uh, I want to say it was the end of February, beginning of March, and it, uh, a general expectation was hopefully by the end of March. And since then, a follow-up towards the end of March, and I haven't heard back from that yet. We need to pick up the phone and call this woman. I can do that. Find out what's going on. Um, I have a question for the chief. Um, how will our quality of service improve through my work at Um Is there a merger for Center Fell on the table that I'm unaware of? No, there <laughs> has been claims made well, that I mean, the merger could, would improve quality. Again, I speak hypothetically and best guess here. 
um, but they have a larger training bureau, they have a larger fire prevention bureau, um, they would probably get a paramedic on the engine company, uh, those are a couple off hands that come to mind, but I'm not currently aware of any merger options that people are speaking of, especially ones that would save the district money. I would love for someone to produce that, but I've yet to see it. Uh -huh. I would recommend, and I don't know if Eric's already done this, that we reach out to Centerfell to at least get a proposal from them for a contract for chief officer oversight for our department so the board can at least consider it and know what kind of cost might be associated with that. So um, one, I'm sorry, I, one was larger fire prevention bureau, correct. and the other one was? Um, they have a training bureau, and they have paramedics on their engine company. We could as well, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Isabella, they have two people for vegetation management. That's all they do. And they also have a medical director and they have two nurses for the fire department. Which we also, as Brim, would have access to the future services. But they have... So we do have access to the fire prevention? Group. No. We have access towards the medical direction and oversight. And we still have not quantified the savings that we would achieve through the merger with Santa Fe. I don't know of any merger. I, there's no merger. No, I, again, I, yeah. I'm trying to understand what's happening because people are increasingly referring to savings achieved through the merger with Santa Fe. Yeah, I don't, so I don't, I've heard that in this room tonight too. I would I don't like see to it. know what the savings are, A, and B, what the improvement in quality of service would be. I don't, Just so I, I don't, understand. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know of any savings. I'm on the same page with you as that. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think there could be uh, some higher level of service. I mean, the big one, of course, is a paramedic on your engine company, yeah. and then they have seven people in their administrative staff to do what I as one do. So, at this point in time, we do not have anything from Santa Bell in terms of costing of any potential agreements, whether it be chief officer, whether it be full blown merger, Santa Fe is uh, very well aware of the district's desire to receive this. And my understanding directly from the city manager is he is working on it uh, and will get something to us as quickly as he can. The city manager as opposed to the chief? The city manager. Yeah. With input from the chief? Oh, I'm sure. That I am, I am yeah. sure. Eric and I met with, with Jim and Craig. Uh, right. And Chief Gray about them. Because we'd like to know what Chief Gray feels <coughs> he would need he would need somebody to be responsible for. Well I would like to sit down with Chief Gray and with my job description and what I do and let uh -huh. him know what they would need to be providing so they could get a clear And he could tell you what he feels exactly. they need to be providing. Yes. Right. Which I think is probably is if Correct. not as germane, more germane, and attach a cost to that. Correct. Right. And I'd say all we're talking about at this point is a contract for oversight for a chief officer position. That's correct. Mm -hmm. yes. Understood. Mm -hmm. And then we, there have been some preliminary discussions about like a reverse contract like CSA 19 does. Um, Eric and I were under the understanding that, that Santa Fe doesn't currently want to go that direction with Brim. No. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'd just like to have a straw poll from the board if I can possibly do that to say that we all agree in directing the chief and the subcommittee that's talking to San Rafael to approach Chief Gray and the business manager to elicit such a proposal so that we can evaluate. Yes. Is that? Yeah. Cool. I, I would Thank just you. say that that's been done. They're just, working on it. I hear you. Yeah, no, yeah, well, look, I think we're on the same page. Thank yeah. you. I want to make sure that they know that this board is unanimous in wanting that. That's great. Thank you, Jeff. We uh -huh. will pass that on. Can I ask a question related to, oh. Sorry. Er, yes. Had a previous meeting, and I can't recall which one. There was some discussion about whether we had to go hat in hand to San Rafael, because that was the only option left when the county in Nevada said thanks, but no thanks. And there was a comment made by somebody, and I don't remember who, that said, gee, we don't really have any leverage. And I, I look at just this last month's activity report, and ignoring mutual aid, just the J, two JPA agreements with Sarah Fell, 
and that took up 48% of the district's total emergency responses. Uh, it would seem to me that we have a lot of leverage relative to whether we do or do not continue that GPA. Uh, I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but I, I think it's something worthy of whoever the committee is that's working on this. Think about whispering to San Rafael. I don't disagree with you, Irv. Um, I think that both agencies, the city and the district, recognize that there are large mutual benefits to both agencies of a strong working relationship with each other. Uh, I have no idea at this point. We haven't received anything from San Rafael um, to even base where their head may very well be at. And I think uh, at some point once that comes in, there will probably be a larger conversation regarding it. Well, my concern is that they, they, they're in the driver's seat to propose to us a cost for this sharing of a chief officer when we have something to also sell to them, and that is our service to their district or their city through the JPA. I don't know what else we're really getting in compensation, let's call it, for our participating in those GP JPAs. They're, they're, I realize our, you know, mutual aid, I'm not even talking about. Right. That's a whole other story. Right. But it's, it's just that what are we getting for our GP JPA that's taking 48% of last month's calls? And that's low. And, you know, and again, from where I live, if we're over there doing a first aid call, the response time out to Lucas Valley Estates has been materially increased. Well, and I think, I mean, it also goes to say, certainly whatever proposal we got back would come to the board, and then the board would be able to look at it. And that is not just because we have one or no proposals that does not mean the board's hands are tied and that the board can't do anything. I mean, at some point, the board is going to have to make some decisions. And we've discussed many of those, you know, at the committee level, and then some have cropped up at the, I think last month as well, I was talking about some of them. So, you know, I don't want to get too lost in where we are in the process. Right. Um, so there's still a ways to go. But I mean, I think definitely we've made headway in sort of connecting with an agency and entering into those, you know, hey, can you write it and give us a proposal? So I think you get a proposal and then, and then you start getting into bigger picture questions yeah. like negotiations and because costs and who does what for whom. It does um, seem like this is going to touch a lot of stuff. Okay. But, but there, is, there is no hope of getting a truck from, from San Rafael Fire Department, right? Pardon, pardon me? We, we cannot get a, a, a truck, utility. a utility truck. Not currently. So when you say not currently, I well, they're that. getting they're getting taking delivery of some new chief officer uh, trucks. So if we were in the market for one of those, would that would be easy for one of their them? maybe one of their replacement one of the ones that's being replaced is might become an option. Is there a timeline? No. Do you want to talk about utility vehicle now or wait? Oh, no, the utility the vehicle is not it's on not the agenda. agenda. Oh, <laughs> No, I was just, this whole discussion was kind of fought fire with the fire commission last week. And I can see this coming up again in the draft minutes of the fire commission meeting. So, Yay. I'm just, we're going to rehash and rehash. How about rehashing? I love, I love digging. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's stay on track because we're getting... I still have a question. The um, first meeting that you all had with San Rafael, that was a subcommittee meeting, correct? And you were there at that meeting? He was not there. At the first meeting? No. We, we substitute and add and change. And then you weren't at the second meeting either? I know, isn't that crazy? Well, the second meeting was just staff level. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, yeah, the meetings have been totally various characters. I'm just saying it would have been nice to have someone with your expertise and opinions and thought process and everything at the meetings. I can tell you, you're getting a very accurate description of what went on from both meetings. I was at both of them. So. And I, I well, what, but what I'm saying is the meetings might have been different had Leah been there. No. 
I'm not that special. Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I threw myself under the bus for that first <laughs> thing to get it to happen. I knew I was going to be out of the country. I would have liked to have been there, but yeah. Um, okay. Anything else in the ESS meeting? Stephen? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, uh, it was discussion of the chief uh, retiring or eligible for retirement as of uh, June 30th, I think, of this year. Is that still going to happen? or? I'm currently evaluating an exact retirement date. Okay, so no, no, no specific plans. Um, okay, um, then I'd like to comment on uh, Irv's uh, very insightful observation that we need leverage and we do have leverage. Um, I would like to add to that that uh, proper business negotiation has credible alternatives at the uh, at the negotiation table. It doesn't sound like negotiations are really happening. It's like we're just, we're saying, well, please give us your best offer. And they know we have um, a large budget that they can um, potentially uh, have a lucrative arrangement with them. Um, the reason why um, Chief uh, and Isabella uh, that I talked about savings, because I'm comparing it to Santa Venetia CSA 19, their contract. It seems to me if they've agreed to CS 19 and that large uh, piece of land uh, that we should be able to get somewhat close to to uh, that kind of arrangement with with us. Um, of course they're going to say we're not interested because they know we have lots of money. So I, I hope that this district looks at it from the standpoint of the future of this district, uh, the taxpayers, and also our uh, OPEB, or our, our retirement uh, obligations and really tries to work this uh, this merger as as hard as we can it doesn't it's just I, I'm astounded that I'm not hearing that you know we had three meetings this week uh, uh, at every at, at every uh, uh, board meeting it just it doesn't seem like uh, there's a big hurry to uh, uh, you know tie the knot here but I do think it will happen because quite frankly, if we just say, you know what, we're not going to do this anymore uh, with the shared, not the shared services, but the uh, what we what we have, they're going to come to the table, and we have to be willing to credibly present to them that we are ready to take option one, two, or three, and 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 then follow through. Otherwise. We will never make this happen, and we will never get savings that we justly deserve for uh, the community's investment in our fire service. The, 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 uh, the, the budget for fire protection should be shared equally throughout the areas that we cover. It should, we should not be subsidizing so much uh, in the city of San Rafael, and that's what's happening now. And, uh, we can't even get them to even uh, give us a, a paramedic, which is also another, uh, quite frankly, if, if you're a business person, you, people will be thrown in jail for, for contract fraud. So um, please, you know, amp up the pressure there. You, if you need some help on that, uh, maybe find someone outside that can consult you on that. But um, we, we really do need to get this right because of future of our district depends on. Thank you. All right, item E6, CSD records management policy. We have a draft to approve. Um, so this is again, um, maybe more so reinventing the wheel than anything else we've done before because um, in the past we've merely documented what um, was ongoing here. Um, it's more of a, um, well researched and uh, I think reviewed by the county council attempt at uh, uh, documenting how we will be managing our records and that includes the requests, the management of, of uh, digital and paper um, itself and then destruction of any um, old documents that we could potentially dispose of. Um, I'll take questions 
but um, most of it is really dictated by either the California government code or the, or the um, Public Records Act. Again, I have um, not that much creative writing here. <laughs> Anyone have questions, comments? Or actually, no, I'm sorry, we need to make a motion to approve. Okay, I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Okay, now discussion. Okay. Um, thank you for your efforts, number one. Um, I'd like to suggest that we have a little bit stronger stance on using district equipment for communications. In other words, we say, you know, rather than the language used, we ship, employees shall use, whenever possible, um, district assets in order to communicate. Uh, we want them to refrain from using personal assets for a number of reasons, and we'd like to make that clear. We also should, um, in this policy, make sure that employees understand that they have absolutely no right to privacy when they're using a district asset. In other words, anything that they um, use, anything that they text, anything that they um, put in their computers and this and that is, is going to be a public record su subject to certain confidentiality restrictions. Um, covering classification of confidential and restricted documents is probably something that should be included. I'm sure what? Classification of confidential or restricted documents and discussions should probably be covered. Aside from PRA requests, how will the district deal with subpoenas from legal authorities and similar requests which may include confidential information? Record retention is generally where retention periods for various classes and subclasses of documents are specified. This section seems to deal more with record security. I think defining a checklist with legally and or policy defined retention periods would facilitate any actions by the district manager or anyone else with regard to continuation of storage or abandonment. Finally, the method of destruction should be the most effective, cost effective, and environmentally sensitive means at our disposal. I'll send you an email. Thank you. Can you yeah. Mm -hmm. Assuming that we're going to adopt this and looking at sections C2 and C3 that aren't to destroy documents relating to any real property in which the district has an interest or any building plans or district maps, I have for Eric to keep a never ever destroy or lose. <laughs> <laughs> These are the original tracings for the tennis courts over at Miller Creek School and the original plans for the original footbridge across Miller Creek. While the bridge has been replaced, the foundations have not. Thank you. There, now they're out, they're out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> In the Eric's office. Uh, Storage. <laughs> uh, questions from the public? Stephen? Yeah. Um, uh, forgive me, uh, Isabel, I didn't have time to look through it. It did one thing pop out at me that you're talking about um, a cost at per page, and you didn't specify whether that's a printed page. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So the cost for electronic documents is zero, correct? Correct. Okay. So I wonder if you can um, uh, add a sentence saying that the cost for electronic documents uh, documents is zero. Sure. Um, uh, okay, and the other thing I'm, uh, that troubles me, and I, I, I guess I really want to analyze this, is uh, several months back, or it might have been last month, I think it was two months back, we were talking about um, trauma prevention, um, or you know, what we do if uh, something goes astray, and uh, uh, I was we discussed it, I was very uncomfortable with the fact that uh, only the uh, general manager and the president of the CSD would have uh, uh, authority to act uh, uh, on behalf of the public. And um, 
I am troubled with these the combination of two documents that we're uh, basically closing the uh, uh, the district up for uh, examination by the public because after all that's what you do you represent the public uh, so uh, I guess I, I might have more to say once I have a chance to look at this but uh, uh, I, I just want to express my concerns right now thank you I just had one little question. I, I was looking at something that said how to destroy documents, and what I remember reading is uh, shred or burn. You can't really burn documents that are on your computer, right? On your website or wherever they are, you can't burn them. How do you destroy those documents? There are electronic tools that can wipe a hard drive of files. It's not enough to delete files off of a computer. You need right. to have software, right. and you need to basically wipe the hard drive and make sure that that's true on both the personal computer and the network computer in which they may have been stored. That's what Hillary did, right? <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm serious. Can, can you go in and just wipe or clean pieces? Sure. Or files. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so you don't, you, you were talking about the hard drive, you, which you mean you can individually wipe out a particular file. Yes, you can. Okay. Do we need to add that into this document? Yes, we do. May I ask you why you would want to do that? I mean, with storage as cheap as it is, uh, uh, cloud storage, is there any reason why we would need to destroy um, the record of, of what we have done? Um, so records that are duplicate or unnecessary to maintain um, do not make it hard on the limited staff we have to uh, be able to comply with public records requests on the records that are actually significant and legally required to be kept. So it sounds like it would take actually more effort uh, to delete records because if you have backup daily backup storage, which do you have that daily backup storage, uh, Eric? Offsite. Offsite. You do, but it's every day. Okay. Every day. So there. What? Every minute. Every minute. So there's really no reason to destroy uh, digital documents. I, I can't. The only reason there would be is if maybe you didn't. Maybe you didn't want something revealed. It would be much more difficult to identify a record that you need to identify if you have 2,000 records versus 20, right? If you, there's or indexing not. strategies. I, I don't think that's so that that the I have a question, that. just curious. Mm -hmm. What's the roll on, roll off for your backups? 30 yeah. days, 15 days? I would have to ask. I'd have to find out that. Okay. Generally speaking, backups do not live forever. You know, they roll on, and then some specified number of days they roll off, and all that stuff's gone. Right. Only the stuff that's currently being backed up will be on on the backups of this offsite facility. Well, it depends on what backup you're using, because yeah. sometimes it only backs up the new right. changes. Right. I guess my point is this. Um, rather than actually having to do any work with an off-site facility that has backups, if, you wait, if, if your period is 15 days where they still have these documents you want to dispose of, after 15 days they'll be gone from their facility. Well, so you like don't have to, to do anything. I would like to see information about backing up because the, this document did say backups were, are, will be done, backups this, backups that, mm -hmm. but it never said what kind of backups, where the backups are, you know, Right, so right now we have a motion on the table, and so do we want to amend the motion? Do we want to, what, how do we want to? I would have to revisit the whole policy. Yeah. The, le the last meeting um, we discussed when policies were brought forth, mm -hmm. I think it would be a, a normal and prudent process the first time it was presented in a public meeting Thank to you. review it yes. and then have it, you know, have information and critique done at that meeting 
and then have it revised and yes. brought back at a subsequent meeting for approval. Thank you. Thank you. I just would like to make one one quick comment on uh, the record storage. It, you know, we've had so many legal challenges in the last year or so. Um, documents can, you know, basically get us out of hot water assuming we do all the right things. So, I mean, it cuts both ways. I suppose the reason for this document destruction is to reduce liabilities, but the best way to do that is do the right thing all the time and, and <laughs> document it. So. Thank you. Um, procedurally, since we have a motion, what happens now? Um, motion can be withdrawn. Yes. Thank you. I'll withdraw the motion. I'll change the motion to say um, I would like to um, offer some of the feedback for this particular um, draft policy to be incorporated, um, edited, and presented at the next meeting for review and approval. And I'll withdraw my second from the first motion and second the second. Okay, awesome. I love it. All right, thank you. All right, District Manager's report. Carol, Karen, Wilk. Oh, do we need to vote? We made a motion. It was seconded. We should probably vote. All those in favor. Uh, All right. Even better. Okay. All right, Eric, District Manager's report. Did you want to do this? Okay. Uh, Obviously, it's been a busy month with a lot of things, and most all of it is within this package. So I kind of limited uh, this report simply to the maintenance facility uh, initiative and where we're at on that. Uh, we have engaged with the archaeologist uh, and archaeological resource services. They're going to perform a cultural resources study of the entire area for us. Uh, I expect to have that back uh, ideally within 30 days or so. Uh, been looking at some of the initial design concept ideas. Uh, we were actually supposed to meet yesterday, but Bill had to go out of town. Uh, we're set to meet tomorrow, so we kind of continue to look at some of his designs um, and where he's at uh, in terms of initial schematic designs. Uh, hoping and intending to host another community hearing at some point in mid-June. Um, and then ideally from that point after be able to submit the site review plan application to the county shortly thereafter. Um, the county's going to be a big wild card. We don't know how long it'll take them to make any level of determination. It could be three months, it could be longer, it could be shorter. Uh, we're just kind of ballparking a little bit of a uh, uh, expected to be at least three months before uh, county planning is able to turn back around and give us any uh, level of decent feedback and or certainly a, a full long determination. Uh, we did certainly look into some of the needs at uh, the site next to the firehouse in terms of what would need to be done um, just to even prepare that site to possibly be a location for this uh, and going through and putting together some rough estimates. This is strictly for infrastructure needs, things that already exist at the current location. Um, I kind of bullet pointed all of them out right there, but you'd ultimately be looking at about $81,000 just to prepare the site to be able to put something like this on there. Um, and that would be all of the infrastructure, sewer, water, uh, electric, uh, telecom, moving a lot of earth, uh, having to uh, cut curbs, move in a new driveway, so on and so forth. It's all listed here. Um, and that's where that's at. So it's moving. Uh, like I said, right now we're hopefully looking at uh, a late June submittal to the council. Okay. Um, running the sewer line across Miller, uh, across Miller Creek, all the way. So we're digging up the road. Yes? You would need to. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The main entrance to our community. Mm -hmm. Right in front of the fire station. Yeah. Herb would probably be able to talk more to Am I right on that? Yeah, there's it? an existing sewer manhole right by that pedestrian path that comes out across the street. Uh -huh. We'd have to extend the main parallel to Miller Creek Road down some distance to opposite where the new building would go, put a manhole there, and then put a sewer lateral across Miller Creek Road and into the site. Okay. Um, my question and concern is, what would this do to an emergency response from our fire department when we've got the road dug up? Nothing. 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 It can be done to deal with that. It just costs money. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. 
Other questions for Eric? Questions from the public? I just want to ask, is this a public works project? Yes. It is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I, I have a few comments. Uh, first of all, uh, regarding the historical records, um, Dr. Slaymaker, uh, it, it's been known since the 50s that uh, there are Indian settlements all throughout uh, Lucas Valley, but particularly in Marinwood Park and also on the Dixie School site. As you know, uh, Indian artifacts continue to be dug up uh, and exposed after heavy rains uh, along the creek. And uh, we have, actually he's not here anymore, but uh, there are collection collectors that go out regularly to uh, you know, uh, dig that stuff up. So it is a concern. We've got uh, two settlements. I think it's about 6,000 years worth of history here. Um, and um, I copied some of the documents uh, over in uh, the County Library of California room. There's records from the 50s. There's also uh, specifically a, uh, uh, the, uh, there's a ordinance dealing with Indian sites in Marin County that you need to be aware of. So um, that may be a challenge as you are uh, uh, looking at options. In addition to, of course, the uh, stream, 100 foot uh, stream setback and uh, also the uh, concern with uh, the rare and endangered species in that, the area of the maintenance shed. Now, with regards to site option four of these estimates, I kind of look at this and I go, what are you talking about? Uh, you don't need a bathroom in a uh, garage. Um, where do the maintenance workers go to the bathroom when they're working in this building? Probably one of the bathrooms uh, right here. I don't know why that wouldn't be an option. The other thing is, with, if you do decide that you need to bring water and sewer, I don't know why you wouldn't try to tie into, uh, uh, an, or, or maybe you can address this, I, because I don't know the answer. I don't know why you couldn't tie into this sewer system if that would be permitted, because after all, this is just a service uh, building. It's not, uh, it's not going to be any grand uh, architectural wonder in the great uh, Western world. So, Steve, so I, these um, I don't want to expenses. Up, we're, we're just, I, I mean, this is I'm, I'm, way, way over our time. Yeah, yeah thank you. So. so I would like to continue on, so I will. Um, Can you just the, wrap it up, please? The, um, so you've got $33,000 for a sewer line, which I don't think is needed. Um, as far as removing the soil, um, there was talk of reusing soil, actually getting soil to put uh, for our, our repairs uh, uh, in the park. Um, it was just discussed about two years ago to install a berm. So we can repurpose the soil. Um, I, I guess what I'm saying is this estimate is not credible. For option four and so when you make your pitch to the community I hope that you actually recognize that you have not chosen uh, a re what, what a reasonable uh, builder would or even a homeowner would do in, if they had to add, add a garage as far as the driveway is concerned I don't know why you can't share the, the fire department driveway please I don't know why that would be a problem or in March, but maybe it maybe it is. But, but the way I look at it is that um, excuse me, I'm actually still talking. I know um, that's the problem. Well, I'm going to continue to talk. Okay, so uh, I don't know why. Um, you, right now, you have gravel out there, and uh, you do uh, access the area besides the pool um, to get back there, and so. Um, I don't think, I think you're really overthinking this project and um, it will cost a lot of money to the district that doesn't need to be uh, uh, spent and not only that, should be, if you go back there, you, not only will you be violating uh, the environmental ordinances, you will be stealing uh, what should be recreational area 
uh, from our children uh, to service what a bunch of trucks. So. Thank you. Now we're moving on to item F, 840. So let's try to get our time back on, people. Uh, fire Department Matters. Draft in the Fire Commission again April 3rd. Any questions? Or don't no. talk, don't. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> I, in, in the Chief's report, item 7 of the minutes, I, I like what you're saying. I just want to point out that it isn't what it says. It's different from what's on the website. Correct. And it needs to be fixed and... Well, no, no, no. What's on the district website is what the current policy is. What's in the... What we talk about at the commission level are draft changes to the vegetation management policies for the district, which I've not bought, brought before the board to update. My because I'm still getting some information on what our actual legal authority is to require homeowners. I mean, I'm not interested in the part that you can require, because I know you can't require someone to go onto our property right. and clear it, but you can recommend it, and Absolutely. you need a consistent policy for that, and time is moving on, the grass is going to turn brown one of these days relatively soon. So we still so do we recommend that homeowners living adjacent to the open space go on to do clearing of brush and grasses. And right, but, the, but the, again, the website is totally different than what I think is your good suggestions here in your chief's report. I think the website tell, also recommends that they do that. No, all, they, all it says is you can mow the grass. And limb up trees and no. brush. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, look at, I'll look at it. I'll make, I'll make again. necessary changes. No, I look back again. The other thing you mentioned is you talk about utility 58. And I asked, and, and I didn't have, haven't received answers yet, but there were two calls uh, in the last few months, one in the last month, where the they, we didn't respond, essentially. Uh, and I, my questions were, one, whose jurisdiction were those two calls in? I know they weren't in Marinwood. They were on Marin County open space lands that fall within our first alarm response area. But so they aren't in our district. It's not in Marinwood per se, but it is an area we typically respond into. I know you typically do, but it's really Marin County Fire Department jurisdiction, isn't it? Mm, no, I wouldn't say so. I, I think it's ours. But we ought to be collecting a, a lot of taxes. I highly recommend you reach out to the Board of Supervisors for that. Okay, I, I, I question why we are considering ourselves for mutual aid, great, but first in to areas south of Lucas Valley Road that aren't either in our district or in CSA 13. It's, it's, it's either City of Santa Fe or Marin County Open Space. Okay, so, 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 okay. ignore the district the jurisdictional responsibility. Uh, apparently, the call up on Loma Alta, because we didn't want to get up there. Couldn't. Or couldn't, okay, couldn't they say, the county responded is what the... Correct. And how did they respond? With what? Uh, don't know. A type three or you... I or believe a it was a pickup truck. truck. Okay, because they came up a much steeper side than we were than we would have used. I've been up and down that road in my two-wheel drive pickup, not during rainy weather, but a lot. It isn't that big a deal. Over here, uh, the more recent call, the comment was that Battalion 53 responded. Correct. What, what kind of vehicle did that? He has like a four-wheel drive pickup truck crew cab. Is, is your vehicle four-wheel drive? Yes. My vehicle is also an option. We've discussed in-house how in the, until that vehicle is replaced, how we will be responding. Um, I'm comfortable with, the, with what we have moving forward as a backup plan. It's not ideal, but I think it's something that will work. Okay. And it includes us being able to use a Type 3, which is an option as things dry out. It involves us notifying the Open Space District of Ranger to meet us at the trailhead as soon as possible. Uh, as possible transportation mode. It involves me listening up and responding using my car. It involves about the battalion chief responding and using his car. So hopefully one of those four options will be available to our responding firefighters to get to a patient. So I, I truly question that it's our First respond, you know, first you're, let me say you are the closest responding fire department to that area. But if you don't have the right equipment to do it, you don't have an aerial ladder truck either. But, no, but I have arrangements to get one. Yeah, and so you ought to, maybe we need to talk with San Rafael, Nevada County about having a pickup truck that can, you, you four-wheel drive pickup. 
Well, I've reached out to those agencies to see if one's available for us to have at this fire station if currently there is another one. I don't, I don't, but they, why can't they just respond? Well, and we just don't go, so we're just going to stop responding to emergencies we've been responding to for the inception of our fire department. That doesn't seem like a viable option to me. That's You're the closest fire station. We're going to dispatch you to go help this person, and we just say, nah, not today. That's not, well, good, that's not that. good practice. Or not, I trust me. I don't propose we do that. That's kind of what you're telling me. If we uh, make arrangements with the other departments to let them know what our capabilities are. And I've done and, that. Yeah. And I've devised a backup plan, which will hopefully be effective in the meantime. The new utility pickup truck is not on debate for tonight. That's correct. I, I have something to make, eliminate that uh, conversation. Um, actually, I emailed this to you earlier today. Uh, basically, what it is, I'm going to give this to Aaron, you all have copies of it in your email, um, is a litter that you can tow behind uh, our, uh, our little four-wheel drives, um, and it would allow quick access for three firefighters to go off the trail. Uh, I don't know what they cost. I don't know, you know how legitimate uh, that is, but apparently it's uh, used in fire services throughout the country, uh, and I, I'm guessing that's probably pretty inexpensive. We're still to in draft minutes. Okay. And I have not asked for. Well, I, 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 I was just responding to what right. so I what uh, Irv said. Comments. So was he out of order too, no. or? We're on the draft minutes, so you're out of order. Any other comments from the board on the draft minutes? Any comments from the public on the draft minutes? Yeah. I'd like to continue on. I think um, this is worth uh, taking a look at. Uh, we do have the equipment already. Um, I actually think that uh, one of our little uh, our little Kawasaki could get up the hill quicker uh, with less damage to the earth uh, than any other uh, vehicle that you have. Uh, uh, it's just it's just more movable. Maybe you want to get an ATV too, but but I, I it just sickens me to think so that we're going to allow on people. I, excuse me. Keep on time to the meeting. We are running forty minutes late. But, uh, right okay, now. well that's fine. No, um, it's not fine. No, it's not fine. Um, like to so I'm going to continue on because I do have the have the, the right to do this. You, you have the right have to talk for minutes. no more than two or three minutes. And I have uh, the you're interrupting me, and so I get to subtract that. I, no, the so thing of it is, is that um, we have options, and um, the idea head. that the idea that we leave we people out in the woods to die of a heart attack because we don't have equipment is really foul, and I think this is an important thing. So uh, even if we save one or two lives a year. It's well worth it, whatever it is. All right. Go. Sorry, I took your time. Yes. I'm sorry. If I'm not out you can tell me now. No, you go ahead. Listen, um, Chief, there was a comment made um, by one of the commissioners about a chipper day. Yes. I would like to prioritize that as I've, much as possible. I've um, got, uh, I have a couple of bids for private contractors mm -hmm. on costs. The problem is there's only one publicly owned chipper and truck mm -hmm. in the county, um, and it's booked up solid, like, way in advance. But um, I've talked to some private contractors who are available to come out and help us with days like that, and they'll provide a couple operators. So I'm actually going to work with Steve on the first one, and I'm going to put something out on next door to the community that parts of neighborhoods are interested in organizing this to reach out to me, and I'll send one. Okay. I think it's a pretty effective use of the vegetation management budget. That would be great. And also, I think the concept of dumpsters were mentioned. Dumpsters were mentioned, but the chipper day is kind of the way to go. Chipper day is better. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you. How much would that cost? Roughly $1,500 a day for a chipper and a truck and two operators. Is that just for... And that that'll, that'll serve about 15 houses. 15? 15. 15. One five. Yeah. You haven't been by my neighbor's yard. Wait, fifteen hundred dollars for fifteen houses? That's for an eight-hour day. Excuse me. And typically, you can get through about eight, depending on how much fuel there is and how how much brush has been cut down, around fifteen homes. Well, how's that going to help? 
Okay, so like let's. Sorry, yeah, I, mean, I know, I know. I'd like to make a recommendation that you do that as a fundraiser. Um, All right, so let's move on to item two, resolution 2018-05, finding competitive bidding to the unavailing for the Marinewood Fire Department kitchen remodel project. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a second. I'll second. Okay, discussion. So it's just the boiler plate. Yes, uh, this is what I just kind of talked about a couple of uh, meetings ago, ultimately. Uh, the board needs to uh, find that the notice of mining bids was duly really issued, no bids were received, the district thereafter or to solicit quotes informally what the results were and make a finding that competitive bidding would be unavailable as no contractor submitted responses to the original solicitation. All right. Any discussion? Any comments from the public? Steve. I would like the board and Eric to acknowledge the fact that you've got a written bid for a all wood kitchen to be delivered within 30 days with granite countertops. If okay, you this decide. Is not on topic. We are talking about a resolution. We're not to the kitchen yet. Just stand by for the okay. agenda item. Thank you, <laughs> Chief. Okay, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Uh, all right. Okay, item F3 kitchen remodel project. Proposal for project construction. Oh. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second this for the conversation. <clears throat> All right. Shall we conversate? Yeah. Sure. Who would like to start? If I can find you and ask some questions. Um, I'll start. Go ahead. Um, so. On page three, um, substantial completion date, it says 112 calendar days. Correct. So it would take three months to complete that, right? Not really. Probably closer to six weeks because cabinet trees are four weeks out. Uh, but when we put the contract together, I just put some, some lag time in there for them. But we're 13 months into this, so it's going to take two months or three months. We're splitting hairs at this point. Um, okay. The next question I have is, what are general conditions? What page you want? It is... It's the table for the bill. Schedule of value. seem to think there may be some deductive work order changes, but obviously that remains to be seen. He didn't think there would be any more costs. And um, there is a, a line item for paint, $4,200. You have to understand some of his profit margin is built in to those things. So I just also would like to comment on the fact that the way this project has been submitted um, really shows you how this um, contract has been arrived on. It basically took our maximum budget allowed, subtracted the uh, cost of appliances that include an $8,000 wall range um, to plus $2,000 install. Um, and that leaves us with $72,000 um, that uh, John Paul submitted the bid for. The Can I tell you that I've gotten, this is now the fourth bid from a DIR registered contractor that came in at $87,000. Excuse me, this is the first contract, but we've had four bids from DIR registered contractors. The first guy reached out to a month into this project, some Russian guy from Sacramento who came down here was going to do us a favor. 
his initial bid was $87,000. So I'm not making these numbers up. This is the cost of putting a kitchen in a firehouse. Mm -hmm. And there were no other interested contractors that would uh, submit? I was told to directly bid with a contractor to set up a contract for the board to consider at the last at two board meetings ago. So that's what I did. A lot of time and energy goes into this. John's, John's maybe even doing us a favor. Uh, There's a couple other contractors who I had spoken to who were available to put together a contract for us to consider, but I didn't choose that route. I dealt with just one, like I was directing. I, I, by all means, someone else can have this project. This is the last time you're gonna hear from me. Chief, um, I, I'm kind of excited because either way, my job with the kitchen ends tonight, so. I have a question with regard to sales number 6967311, which is the last sales item from uh, Pacific Sales. None of the SKUs on these products turned up anything on the Pacific Sales website. Can you tell us what these things are? Which, which I'm sorry, which one? The last sales order. $269? It's, no, no, no. In total, it's around $1,500. I'm just asking, what are the items? I can't tell what I'm producing. I'm not sure what you're looking at. Okay. $1,482.40. Oh, right, that one. Um, one is a sink. One is a faucet, one is a garbage disposal. I see no ceramic tile in the project, but yet there's a line item for ceramic tile in you the just, schedule of values. He, that's basically, you're going to have a, a um, solid slab countertop, but they're going to be tiles that go with the backsplash, but it's going to be the same material as the countertop. It's mislabeled as ceramic. It's just going to be the same um, solid slab granite material in the tile form. So this, is this this is not the backsplash that has that Z something tone painting that's no. different than that? Yeah. Z tone painting was two bits ago. Two bits ago. No, that's what's on the drawings. Okay. So you're saying these are quartz tiles, not ceramic tiles? Is that Correct. what you're saying? It's just the backsplash. Correct. Other questions, comments from the board? Comments from, yes, comments from the public. Do you want to go first? Um, you want to go first, go ahead. Oh, I just, all I want to say is, it's time. It's been over a year, and I think it's, absolutely disgusting what you're doing to our fire department. And I would not be able to live with a kitchen like that. I don't know how they can. I don't know how any of you could live with that kitchen for over a year. And I really think you need to, uh, to just listen to your heart, okay? You wouldn't do it to your husband or your wife or your live-in, whatever. You wouldn't do that to anybody. Why are you doing it to the fire department? Just approve it. Let's get it over with. Please, thank you. Stephen? Well, first of all, I, I want to talk about a couple of things. First, uh, the, the contract is really not detailed enough. And uh, as it was noted, you know, we've got some errors in here, like with the ceramic tile and the mystery about uh, the, uh, uh, the $1,500 charge from. Pacific sales, but we do have a written bid that you received, uh, I guess, a month ago, which 
uh, had you uh, acted quickly, uh, you would be installing a kitchen in another couple of weeks here, uh, actually next week, um, with plenty of room to buy all the luxury uh, appliances and uh, to uh, uh, save the district some money. Um, repeatedly during this process, uh, laws have been broken and, and, and also uh, we have gotten uh, bad advice. And um, I think there may be, and I, I did send, each send you a, uh, a notice to this, there may be um, legal pro uh, repercussions of the district if you do not go with the lowest qualified bid. Um, I understand, I, I did check uh, John Polk Construction uh, on the website, at the DIR web website, the contractor's website. He is, he's worked for a lot of companies, but he is running his own company right now, and he has two employees, um, and he doesn't have current workers' compensation. Um, so uh, I, I guess if we are, in fact, adhering to the law, which would be the first in the history of the district, as far as I can tell, concerning uh, DIR contracts. Um, uh, if, that, if that's the standard we're using, which is an incorrect standard, then um, uh, I don't think he, he actually qualifies. So you check the DIR tonight, you'll see what I'm talking about, about John Pope construction. Um, he's got a lot of juice in this contract. And you all have the ability, actually, Eric or, or the chief has the ability to uh, pull the trigger on this, as they did last year at this time. So um, please be good stewards and recognize that legal costs also may be added to whatever you approve on this John Pope uh, construction. Uh, project. Do you legal costs. Legal. I've yeah, watched watch this, this, this thing go on for I don't know how many meetings, and the same questions are being asked over and over again. It seems you can't seem to get a contractor to do this job. And, and you know, if you guys really want to volunteer, step in and start hitting some nails. I mean, figure this thing out. But there will be legal costs. Because if you hurt your finger or something happens, somebody's going to sue somebody somewhere, somehow, sometime. And it seems this whole country runs on lawsuits. Let's just get the project done and finished so we don't have to continue on and on and on and on and on and on with this discussion. The, I, wait, I'm not done. Excuse okay, sorry. me. Okay. Thank you. I'm not done. No, that's Thank fine. You. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. So I've been listening to this, and it just it goes around and around. Can gets kicked out further down the road. I don't see. You, you've gone through all the processes. You've done that. You've done what's legally supposed to be done. So I don't see why people keep questioning and questioning and questioning. It, it, it is what it is. Move on. Move on. That's my comment. It, it is very bad for him. Stephen sent an email directly to John Pope today that was sort of threatening. And I, I thought it was very inappropriate and out of line. Is John Pope uh, a, a contractor that legally can bid on this job? Yes. So what is your problem? It's a DIR contractor, so that multi uh, and I w I'm glad that you asked that, and I want to address what you said. Sure. We're talking about dealing with uh, contractors, licensed contractors, and keeping it uh, within the scope of small projects. There was a carve-out last year. We didn't know about it uh, January 1st, but we did certainly know about it in May, that uh, for small projects, you do have to follow the... Um, if it's a government uh, procedure, there are procedures you have to follow. No, it, but it, 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 kick, no, it kicks in at 25000 okay? It kicks in this at 25000 yeah. This is what it's bid for. But I have a written bid, which a there are a legitimate are, contract, a legitimate, a legitimate so contract for $8,000 installed. So 
And maybe you want to spend 10 times the amount. Thank you. Um, I think the only comment I am going to make is I am incredibly disappointed that we are looking at only one, one contract. There have been so many contractors who have expressed interest who were told explicitly, no, we are working with one party. That is not, to me, how I would run a business. And what I learned, you get three quotes, you compare them, you I've gotten, go back. I've gotten eight quotes, Leah. I've gotten 10 quotes. Not recently, not oh. since we got out of this process. So, I mean, we are where we are, but I do not, I feel very back to the corner as a board member. You don't have to approve this, Leah. Oh, how, you heart, how your heart directs you. Has it been put out to the public for a bit? Twice. Well, then I understand. You have not gotten pre-contractors to do it? We had contractors who came to us, especially after it was in a couple of months ago. We had contractors who came to us. I got multiple bids directly from and builders. Then and then we're told, no, we were just working with one contractor. I got multiple bids directly from contractors. We had a sealed bidding process where we got two bids that the board both rejected. We had a second close bidding process that no one submitted for. The board directed me two months ago to directly deal with one contractor to secure a contract. That's what they have before them tonight. And in the beginning, there was I'm, I'm at done. least 15, 15 contractors that said, no, we don't, you're too little. We can't make enough money on this job. Yet we have a full chief talk full bit talk for talk. So I've, I'm just going to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Extensions? I'd like to remind everybody he's not qualified. One concern. The chief said no matter what we did tonight, he's done with this. I want to make sure that someone, the chief or someone he designates, is responsible for shepherding. I will, now I will manage, I will manage contract. the project moving forward. Okay, I just from what you yeah. said, I wanted to make sure that was going to happen because it has to be managed. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. How, how, could you go ahead and tell me how the votes were? Because I didn't hear Mr. Shea. Did you vote yay or I, nay? I think the camera uh, probably captured it in the minutes or whatever. I just, I, is this really important to go through now? I want it. To yeah, where, he, he voted for it, correct? Only okay, so Jeff Naylor voted no, is that correct? Jeff is yes. the only one that voted no. Hold on, we're just moving ahead with the meeting right now. Well, can now. you clarify that? That's pretty important. I, I don't know who voted and who didn't vote. Please just we tell us. So, well, let's move on to the fire activity. Could you please repeat the vote? If you don't repeat the vote, you're really doing a disservice to the public. Is it relevant? Yes, it's yes, relevant. Yes, it's relevant. You're all going to be elected or kicked out of office, maybe because of this very yes. issue. Yes. Who cares? Isabella said yes. Uh, Jeff was the only one who opposed the project. Everybody else voted yay. Except for I, I Leah. Abstained. Except, oh, you abstained. Yes. Who abstained? Yeah. You abstained. Yes. But Mr. Shea said yes, and Herb said yes. No, mm -hmm. Mr. Shea abstained. No. 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 Oh, come, come on. on. Yeah, Isabella got oh. right. See, this is what watch. happens when we're here too late. So Should I am just. Whoever's recording the meeting, tell us. Okay, like, no, no, no. So no, why don't we, we have to do this? Why don't we make an announcement? <laughs> you see the results online tonight. What you did. So, you know what? Can like, I? Can I just make an announcement? Wait that. So that everybody. Would you make the announcement? Yes, I'll be yes, happy to do that. The motion passes, three to one with one abstention. Three to one, one abstention. Correct. And the abstention was me, Leah. And I want to, because the chief mentioned the email I sent to John Pope, I did get a response back. 
I basically told uh, John Pope that it was a controversial uh, uh, project and that the little project may be a lot more involved. And he, he returned back the, the to message to me as, yes, it is. I think you're right. So I don't think he really wants to do the, the I, I don't want to engage with you. Um, I, I talked talk to John real cool. Like, that is, okay. Anyway, uh, let's get back to item F4, Fire Activity Summary and Chief Report. Any questions? Any questions? This is for review. Yes. You mentioned in here that um, we may indeed be losing one of our parents. Yes. Uh, is that a certainty? Yes. Well, he was offered a conditional job offer today based on the results of his medical and psychological exam, which occurred later this next week. Um, he's probably going to have a start date of May 12th, May 15th, in the new higher academy for the city of San Rafael. Hate to lose him. Great kid. We got a good year and a half plus out of him. Um, moving forward to the bigger department to work as a paramedic. And good for him. I'll find a good replacement. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the public on item F4? What is that? That's the, his report? Yes. <laughs> All right, the date of the next fire commission meeting is May 1st. Moving on to item G, park and recreation matters. They have the draft in as of the PNR commission meeting on March 28th, 7. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, should we move on to the Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Reports? Luke, do you want to take it away? Uh, <clears throat> sure. Are there any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think that's an acceptable uh, presentation. I, I know you guys do that all the time, but bring us through what you you've uh, done no. for a month. No, no, you need, no. You need to read the agenda, Stephen. <laughs> that is completely appropriate. We are on time, finally. I, so. You know, the time doesn't make a difference. Yes, you're, that, you're making an artificial limit to discussion here. Stephen, and you're, you're closing down agenda? discussion. Okay, so it? I will ask questions, detailed questions. Okay, so um, I would like to know what has I'm been sorry, done with the pool order. maintenance yeah, and why? Actually, Stephen, this is out of order. Okay. okay. And we are not on public. Right? Okay, so go, ahead. go ahead. Right. Okay. Luke, you were. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, I think you we had said, oh, what's going on? And you said something to the effect of, like, oh, great. And then you're going to tell us two seconds of something. Uh, yeah, everything's going great. We had a couple of great events this last month. We've got another one coming up. Uh, Breakfast with Bunny, another uh, great year of that. Good turnout. Um, I brought my family for the second time, which is awesome. Um, we're currently in our spring break camp, which is full, going um, really well. Robin's got a good, a good crew working. And then we are currently interviewing and hiring staff for our summer uh, programs, the camps and the pool. Um, some major things going on with the, um, on the rec side of things. On the park side of things, we did uh, complete some maintenance of the pool. We are uh, fixing some cracks in the deck, uh, some minor repairs to our uh, to our pumps, and some other things getting cleaned up and spruced up for the season. Uh, we've got uh, the old sandbox coming out of the park finally, which we're working on this week, and um, we've kept a few weeks in the waiting pool, uh, and we're just trying along with some new projects coming up for the rest of the month. We're excited about. And, uh, yeah, any questions? Sort of an off the wall question, but um, last last fiscal year, um, Shane and the district manager and I started an exercise of looking at capital projects like, over time, over like a ten year period. And that is is this something you're familiar with? I am. You are okay, and you're keeping that up. 
as much as possible. You mean in terms of adding to the, uh, or keeping track of the list and? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I think it's a great idea. Then we'll probably, you know, move between measure A and. Yeah, I've kind of been looking at the list and talking about the different items and, mm -hmm. you know, seeing the longevity of some of our equipment. And I think it's got a really smart move to, to look ahead and see what we're going to need to be replacing. And okay, it's been good. I just want to make sure you were yeah, no, on board with that. I was excited when that came about. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good, a good move, so. Very good. Thanks. Any other questions, comments? On to the public? Stephen? Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I'm thrilled that uh, things are going along swimmingly in the recreation department. Um, and uh, the great uh, energy of the staff is being utilized to great success. So I'm a little disappointed, though, and, and because this is the revenue side of, of what we do here, that we do not have uh, financial performance in um, the, the various special events and classes uh, detailed. Um, uh, as far as the pool's concerned, I'm one of those lap swimmers, and I, I don't know if there's a problem with the, the maintenance, but it doesn't seem terribly clean or the chemicals are off. I'm not 100% certain, so I don't, I don't know how well it gets uh, clean, you know, uh, maintained over the weekends, but I got sick after swimming, so I, I assume it wasn't very clean. Um, with regards to park maintenance, um, and I actually have independently spoken to Luke about this. Uh, we, we had some uh, heavy equipment at, during uh, wet days, which put deep ruts in the open space. And um, I, I, I think the reason why we continue to have these these in, you know, uh, insults to our open space is that we don't have a policy for open space. It needs to be developed and um, it needs to be written down and it needs to be very clear to the staff. We have good staff, but uh, if they're driving on turf that, that instead of the roads, uh, we're really wrecking our open space and the quality of our parks. And isn't that what we're all about, keeping the quality of our parks uh, up to speed? It's not just mowing lawns around here, it's the entire open space that uh, the uh, voters have, have uh, decided to support. Um, the, I guess, um, I guess I, I, you know, the, the comments, the short comments are that we need more uh, attention to the areas that are not just right around this, this uh, uh, center here, so. Um, and uh, also, I hope uh, it, I hope you look at Ur's backyard because obviously they need uh, attention up there. So that I have asked. Oh, I see, Mr. District Manager is laughing. Thank you. The seventh month that I have asked for this to be on the agenda, a written policy for communication response from the district manager. Now. I know why last year's uh, commission chair, or just the board chair, wouldn't add it to the agenda. But I'm wondering why this year's chair will not even consider adding this to the agenda. This is communication. Hey, and I we have need- a really great idea. My brain literally stops. Excuse me? I, my brain stops working this late at night. So if you can put that in the email and maybe send it to me and Eric later. So your brain stops working? Stops working when it's this late, yes. And I consume sugar. So I need to go to bed. Like I do not have any more So you're not going to listen to me or? I can't at this point. So I cannot I mean, answer my question. No. Well, continue to talk <laughs> because you have a right to talk. Yes, you can keep talking and I'm saying let's address it later. But it is, I, I if you're addressing me, I'm saying no, I don't have the brain cells right now to deal with So it. you don't have a brain, so you're not even going to even answer my question. Well, that's just okay. like, um, I, I don't think we're well served by that. Um, yeah, I would like to, uh, for future board meetings, uh, I, I do think that we need an open space policy. I think it's imperative that we look long term about the health of the district, also financial, but also the health of our parks. We can do so much more with what we have if we we spend right and we have good policies. 
And um, I think our, with our new staff, this is an opportunity to move forward in a, in a bold new direction. Uh, we're now in a community of million dollar homes. It's unbelievable. We should, uh, our parks should reflect that, that uh, uh, you know, our, 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 <laughs> our, what we have in our homes. So uh, I, I, this is not, let's not do business as usual. Let's do business better. Thank you. And I, I hope you will agendize that for a future meeting. Item I, recognitions and board member items of interest. Does anybody have anything? Can I throw out a couple things? Mm -hmm. uh, all to the Lions Club. Uh, it got touched on briefly, but uh, they did, and I know our staff has a lot to do with it too, but they did a great job with the egg hunt again. A lot of families were there and that it went well. And I also want to recognize them. They recently made a uh, donation to the district that's going to cover 75% of the cost of a new pool vacuum. Uh, so, two things for the last couple. Is that the kind of thing that we should write them a letter for? Like, I was born to say. Yeah, I, I, there was one, one thing on the, the uh, draft minutes for the, the uh, PNR. Uh, it, Don't get past that, Rob. Yeah, I know, but I was mentioned oh. as speaking there, and I wasn't there. I wasn't at the meeting, so I don't know why the comments were made that I had said something, and Eric said that it's $90,000 to uh, improve uh, just uh, parcel four. Wait, am, I, am I misreading that, Carolyn? I, I, I would have to go back. OK, but I wasn't at the meeting. I realize that. OK. Thank you. Uh, any other recognitions or board member items of interest? OK, I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Thank you all.